missing values is a common problem. Every real life data set has them. And everybody just fills them up with mean, median, or the most frequent value, which works technically, but in most cases, it just straight up corrupts your data set. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have a data set with airport areas, and some areas are missing. And it might look like this. Atlanta, 100 square miles. Dawson, missing. New York, 80 square miles. If you apply the mean approach, Dawson Community Airport will have an area of 90 square miles. Meanwhile, this is the smallest airport in the USA. And now you have just stated in your data that it has the size in between of the two largest airports in America. This is your training data, the ground truth. And what about other columns of missing data? If you have a lot, potentially you can mess up your training data and regardless of the model you're gonna use, it's not going to generalize. Contrary to that, if you want to accurately calculate the missing area of the Dawson airport, you might wanna compare New York, Atlanta, Dawson and all the other airports in your data set in terms of how many runways do they have, how many passengers do they serve, how many flights per day. In other words, you want to train the model to predict the missing data. And you can use a powerful machine learning model like LightGBM or Random Forest to do this for you. Before you even start to train the model to predict whatever is your target, you can train multiple models to predict missing values in your features, thus making them much more informative for the future model. I bet you we can do this in 70 lines of code, or maybe even three. Let's get it done. Let's start by importing the house prices dataset from Kaggle and checking how many missing values does it have. And altogether we have 7.8 thousand. Now how many columns are affected by missing values? Okay, so this is a list of columns with missing data. So three columns are numeric, the rest are categoric. That means they contain text or categorical data. And we have to impute those by different types of models. So for the numeric columns, we're going to use a regression model. For the categoric columns, we're going to use a classification model. One last check and we can see how many missing values are in each column. Knowing that our data set only has 1400, almost 1500 records, we can see that some columns have the majority of missing data like this one or this one or these three. And uh, in many cases, if your data contains or if a column contains over 50% missing values, they should not be imputed. They should be simply dropped because if you have the majority of missing data and the minority of data, which you can learn from, it's not going to be a very good prediction. Now let's break them down into numeric and categoric columns and store them in separate lists. So for these two lists, we're going to use different models. As you can see here, I've imported LightGBM Regressor and LightGBM Classifier. Now before making it pretty, let's just experiment. We're going to create our function and test it as we go in the interactive environment here. First, we'll check if the column contains more than 50% missing values, and in this case, we'll drop it. Otherwise, we'll impute it. And as you can see, GitHub Copilot already, knowing that this is what everybody else does, is proposing me to impute the missing data by median. But we're not going to do that. First, we'll make a copy of your data set. So let's say data equals df.copy because we're going to change the subset of data that we're going to use for training and we don't want to affect the original data set. And just for experimentation, let's check our numeric columns. And as if we have been iterating through this function, let's say column is the first column from this list, load frontage, just so we'll be able to see what are we going to do within this function here. Well, not a function, spaghetti code at this point, but we'll wrap it into a function when we're done. And so now let's extract indexes of missing values in this column. Let's just double check and we can see that all of them are missing. And altogether we have 259 nands. We're gonna add an extra column to our data that is going to indicate which records have missing values and which don't. So data is none is gonna equal to zero. And in those rows which we have recorded in our NAND indexes is gonna equal to one. And if we look at our data set right now, we can see that here the rightmost column is going to be this is nan and one is going to indicate that there are missing values in the lot frontage as you can see right here and we're going to use this is nan column just to split the data into the training and testing data sets after we'll transform all the other variables and prepare the data set for machine learning for now we cannot train on this data because we have a lot of categorical columns in here represented as text so before we split the data into train and test and train the model to predict lot frontage missing values we need to do some transformations you will just factorize all the categorical columns in this data copy using the built-in pandas factorize method and now we have a look at the data types it's going to be all numeric okay very good now we can split the data into the training and testing subsets let's just double check once again and we've made a small mistake here because we already have the column variable 
when we start iterating the larger loop and now again we overwrite this column variable with this smaller iteration. Let's rename this variable into the cat call so they don't interfere with each other in two different loops, one inside another. Again, let's assign lot frontage into our call for continuing our experimentation. And if we check the test data set and see what's in this column, we can see that they're all missing. And in the train, they're gonna be all filled with data that we're gonna learn from. All right, now let's make the usual X train, Y train, X test variables. And Copilot is gonna help us do this real quick. So here we have them. And now we'll simply fit the uh, light GBM regressor model onto the X train and Y train and predict the Y test on the X test. As you can see, these are our predictions for the missing values in the lot frontage. And notice how different they are. And this is much more refined other than filling them up with a one single constant mean or median value for this column. The last thing we need to do is to include these predicted values into the certain indexes of the original data frame into this specific column. And now if we check how many missing values are in the original data set in this column, we can see that there are none. Very good. So now if we iterate through this whole loop, it's going to one by one take each column from the numeric columns and impute them. Now let's wrap it into a function and break it down into modules because some of them can be reused by the next function we're going to create, impute cat calls. Certainly we're going to check for columns that have over 50% values in both numeric and categorical columns. So this code can be reused. We'll call it drop over 50% nan and we're going to pass a data set and the column name. We will just take this code from here copy it in here and return our data frame. So what else is being replicated? The factorization of the categorical columns. And let's make a separate function for that. And again, we'll just copy and paste the code from here. And we need to remove this argument here. The cat call is going to be inferred from the columns in the data, which we pass in here of type object. And now we can simply replace these two lines of code with data equals factorize data. This already looks better. So what about these five lines of code? They're rather simple, but again, since we're repeating them, we want to wrap it into a separate function. Let's say define create splits. And we also need to pass in the column variable here because for a specific column in numeric calls, we're going to have to create train and test subsets. And for X train and Y train, and for X train and Y train and X test, we're going to need that column name. So it will be dropped from the training and testing data. And the last part of code is create a model and make predictions. We'll also wrap this into a separate function. And we're going to need one more argument in here, which is not obvious at this point because we're only imputing numeric columns, but if we're going to use the same function to impute the categorical columns, we're going to have to use a different type of model, not the regressive, but the classifier. So let's say mode is going to be the argument. And if mode is going to be regression, our model is going to be light GBM regressor. Else the model is going to be classifier. And here in our function to impute numeric column, we're going to call the train predict with the regression argument. Okay, so this already looks much better. These four functions are going to be used with impute cat calls, which we are going to create in a minute, and almost no code repetition is going to be here. And actually, we don't need a separate function for numeric and categorical columns. If we just add an extra argument here and change it a little bit, we can use the same function for both. We'll change the num calls into the calls list and we'll add a mode argument, which is going to be either regression or classification. And down here, we're going to pass in this mode argument and these num calls we're going to change into calls list. And we need a few additional changes in here because when we send data to factorize, if we are predicting categorical columns, it's also going to factorize the target column that we want to train to predict. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep the original values of the categorical column that we want to impute in the data so that we don't have to then reverse transform it from integers into the categories. So before we do factorize, we're going to say x equals data drop column and we're going to drop is nan as well because it's irrelevant. It's just the column that we use for splitting the data and y is going to be data call. And when we factorize, we're going to say x equals factorize x and then our data is going to be x join y. So let's give it a test. Let's import our original data frame 
we already have the numeric columns and categorical columns in here and, and we can use this function to impute the missing values in the numerical columns with the mode regression and before we use this function we need to initialize all of them because our environment here in the interactive window does not know that these functions exist now it does and now we can do the imputation of the numerical columns we made a small mistake here we did not need to drop is name here from the x variable because when x then transforms back into data and we will pass data to the create splits the create splits function is going to use the is nan column to split it into the training and testing data so this was a minor mistake let's initialize this function once again so we have imputed all the missing values in the numerical columns now let's do the same for categorical columns and use the cat calls list and use the classification mode one small error in here that imputes missing has to have a name of the original data frame as df because we are returning the df variable and actually i've made another miscalculation here that the drop over 50 percent function should not be a separate function let me explain why let's grab the code from here and delete this function altogether and uh, we will paste it back in here if the column has over 50 percent missing values our data frame will, is going to get rid of that column and else we are going to predict missing values in this column because if it stayed that way with a separate function then after having dropped this column from the data set since we don't have an if else statement it would then continue to try to predict missing values in this column but the column is already missing so we need to have this if else statement in here so that it wouldn't happen and impute missing values in the numeric columns and impute missing values in the category columns looks like it's working just fine it's going to take a few more seconds before it's done and uh, and let's check how many missing values do we have in our data set after all the imputation is over all right now our data has zero missing values and all of them have been imputed by a state-of-the-art like gbm model and all the missing values have now unique values specific to this particular case the last thing we want to do is make a main function and clean up all this mess in here and this main function is going to have the only argument path which is going to accept the path of the data set on your hard drive and we don't need any of this because we were just playing around now we'll get the calls with missing values now and then we'll break them down into numeric and categorical columns and then we'll impute numeric and categorical columns by two calls of impute missing function now if we save this and run this in our terminal it will do everything for you one last thing we forgot is to save the file with the imputed missing values somewhere on your disk so let's say df 2 csv imputed data csv but when working on analytical projects rarely do i use the terminal i usually go with interactive mode because you can go to your data and get all the analytics impute missing values then maybe create some features do the model selection training and validation and sampling and only as the last stage you package your script into an executable and save it so it can be embedded into some environment or run somewhere in the cloud and i went over my data science workflow and how to set it up on the m2 machine including the vs code the environment and the necessary libraries and how to use all that stuff together in a separate video check it out if you need to of course there are many corner cases and potential performance issues if you want to try to scale this on any possible data set like for instance if you have a daytime column with missing data how do you interpret that or if you have 500 columns and 10 million rows how much time is it going to take i've worked out these problems long ago and released an open source package that does it all for you with a single line of code let's just open an interactive session import pandas uh, read our data set and here we have it with all the missing values in place so how do we go about it from verstack import nan imputer we initialize the nan imputer and we just pass a data frame the whole data frame without any arguments to the imputer impute method and we'll show you the log of all the interesting information about what's happening in the background so the data set dimension how many columns with missing values and afterwards it does all the imputation for you on a single core for 14 columns and here it tells you that it's regression or multi-class or it could have been binary and this is how many missing values were imputed in which column and this class handles all the corner cases optimizes computations on large data sets and uh, well there is a lot more to it than i have explained in my video so now you know how it's done you can simply import nan imputer from the verstack package and let it handle everything for you if you want to learn python and machine learning from scratch i've drafted a perfect plan for you